Hey, it's been a long three weeks since the last time I was back down in the shop. So let's start covering that airplane. All right, before we get started, uh, the last video I did about three weeks ago, that was on the two new acquisitions. That was the uh, little Goblin, the Foamy airplane, and uh, the Mavic Mini. Now, uh, the, the Mavic Mini was what I ended up attacking first, so to speak. Um, went over, had a, a little training session uh, with a good friend of mine, Johnny, uh, and he was just putting me through the paces on things I need to do when it comes time to start shooting video. So, so that was one session. Uh, the next session, um, just to give you a quick little heads up, just to show you, this was me. Uh, on the second session, what I was trying to do was it was as you see we're we're moving we're moving to your left now. Um, I was trying to figure out how to work with the uh, the, the cinematic um, slow motion effect. If you want to call it the, the slow down effect, and uh, I I made one pass in 2.7 uh, 30 frames per second, and this pass was in 1080 at 60. And it's just for me to figure out how well I can speed up, slow down, do whatever I need to do uh, in the, uh, uh, with the video programming, because I use DaVinci Resolve. And just to see how well everything kind of kicked through. So I did like the 1080 better, so that's why I'm showing you the 1080, because uh, with 60 frames per second, if I had to slow it down, say I was going a little bit too quick, wanted to slow it down, then you're not going to have a possible uh, choppiness to the video uh, because with 60 frames per second you can slow it down and you still have good you know frames per second so so anyway that was uh that was just kind of how i want to do that one now with the goblin um i've had five flights on that little plane and uh i would like to tell you what i heard on three of the five flights on the initial let's call it the launch, where you gently toss it into the air and it takes off like a rocket. Um, yeah, I don't swear on my channel. I, I do it privately, but not on the channel. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so it is a neat little airplane and it's, uh, it's got some speed. Regular level, if you're just doing level flight and you come by at full throttle, we're figuring it's probably gonna be somewhere around 90-ish miles an hour. Uh, but if you come out of a dive and hit level flight, that thing is really just cooking through the sky, and it is super stable. You can fly them around at half throttle, and it's probably still somewhere around 60 miles an hour. For a plane with a wingspan about uh, about that big, it's about 30-ish inches or something like that. Um, very stable little aircraft to fly, and it was it was a it was a joy to fly it. So um, on the fifth flight, I was so happy with the way it flies and uh, you know, it's, it took me two flights to get everything trued out just so it was flying pro the way I wanted it to where it wasn't climbing under throttle and everything. Um, as soon as I got home from the fifth flight, I, I ordered another one. So I've got a, another brand new one sitting upstairs just in case something bad happens to it. I figured I'm gonna have one just sitting in the, sitting in the wings ready to go just in case, like I said, something bad happens. Uh, which is somewhere on down the line it probably will. So anyway, uh, so that was kind of my, uh, my little, it's, I only had one day off um, since that period. Um, so I've gone five and a half weeks with one day off because the other days that I had scheduled to be off, we had a lot of stuff going on at work and they asked me if I'd come in. I mean, I was traveling to other locations as well. so. Um, I just decided let's just go ahead and do it uh, just so we can get this stuff done. It's got to get done. So, so anyway, so that's why I haven't been down here in the shop for three weeks. It's been a, it's been a long time and not doing any work down here. So now you can see I've got a little bit of crusty stuff here on my fingers because I started, I started covering without you. I know, don't get angry. I just kind of started. I wanted to, I was having an issue with this. When I opened it up this morning, I went to pour it out and it would not pour out. And then I stuck a, uh, a piece of a piano wire down the side of it and it was not liquid. It was, it was very soft, but it was not liquid. So what I did was this very first one was all done with nitrate dope. 
it was thick nitrate dope and then now it's it's got two coats on it i gotta do another sand i'll throw another coat down then i'll do another sand and then uh it'll be ready to cover so this one this so the rudder is almost ready to cover um and the horizontal stabilizer it has not been shrunk so right now you don't hear a little ting sound like a drum when you when you go ahead and shrink it it won't sound like a drum until you put the nitrate dope on it and seal all the weave together because it doesn't have a tremendous amount of tension but it's good strong stuff and that's why i still like doing old school models because if they were made with fabric back in the day they're going to get made with fabric now and this was a fabric plane so so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'll do you a quick little, uh, just kind of show you how it's going to work to, to heat these up. I've got the iron at about, oh, 275. And it's always better to start slow and work your way up. Now this stuff here, I am not worried about this with the added compression on it because I've got the laminated wood all the way around on it. So I don't have an issue with this the way it is. Now when it comes time to do the wing, the wing itself, I will be a little less aggressive uh, with the covering because and you never saw it in the uh, in the Taylor craft video um, because of how that plane is built that the root ribs on the wings got pulled in where you had the spars coming through it came in and it made a dip between the spars but because the way that that plane is put together the wing attack when it attaches to the fuselage not only does it help straighten that out a little bit but I've got little it's it's what they had in real life on the plane it's just like a little skirt that goes over the top of the wing between the top of the canopy and the wing and i've got those attached on so you can't see it it doesn't what doesn't affect the way the plane flies it's it's that when i put it together it was it was an area in question and if i had to do it again i'd have put a little bit more support behind the uh um behind the root ribs because the root ribs are made out of two pieces of eighth inch ply um one of the one of the the one of the root ribs on the inside was light ply and the one on the outside was regular marine grade plywood so it's it's pretty much the the light ply on the inside that even though you get epoxy together that's where you're still getting that flex because light ply does not have the rigidity of, of, of marine grade plywood. So um, I didn't know, I knew it was going to happen a little bit, didn't know how much, and it's more than I'd like, but it doesn't affect the way the plane flies. So, so anyway, let me kind of change cameras for over here for you and uh, let's just, I'll show you what I'm doing when I'm uh, shrinking these things. All right, let's go ahead and let's get this started. So we are still at 275. We're going to go ahead and right here, this little spot right here, what that is, that's, uh, that's Polytech. There was a drop that spilled in it and it should be fine. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how well that, that looks when we're done with it. I think you're always going to see it, but uh, just like creases, if you have a crease in it, and we got a crease on this side, you still may see a, the, the, the remnants of that crease but it's just the fabric and the weave in the fabric it is flat so even though it looks like it's got a little bit of a ridge in there it won't have a ridge in it so so let's go ahead and let's slowly pull this across and as you can see not a race against time you're just going very slowly and that's why i start off at 275 because um, you can you can get this stuff up to 350 uh, that's not advisable I always start, I, mine, I've always shrunk everything at 275. And if I've just got a couple little spots, it's got a little pucker in it, like on the, uh, and I'll show you on the, on the rudder, I've got a little bit of a pucker in there. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and up the, up the, the temperature and see if I can get that little pucker out. Um, because it's not in a spot where it's going to go ahead and tweak the shape. See, that is all done and you don't have that noise that you get when the uh, when you put the nitrate dope on and it locks all the weave together. Let's go ahead and crank this side out. Play a little music.
Okay. That is done. Both sides. So what I will be doing, and I'm going to do this one off camera on this, because I'll bring you guys back when I'm doing the fuselage and the wing. I just I just wanted to get started, just to see how everything uh, everything worked out nicely. So the first one was done with just the nitrate dope. This was done with the polytac that I did, um, because it was solidifying down here in the bottom, and you couldn't use it. So I came in with some MEK. Uh, with some uh, acetone and went in with a uh, just a regular just a piece of piano wire started stirring it around to break it up fill it up stirred around let it sit outside did it about another dose in there so it's I probably put about this much which is probably about I don't know maybe a cup worth in there just to get it where it would where it would thin out uh, enough to uh, to start breaking itself down, to reincorporating itself together. And after sitting outside in the sunlight, uh, we're starting to get warm today, uh, for about three hours, I came, opened it up, and it was all, all back in liquid form again. So this one here, the elevator was done with the Polytac, and the rudder was just done with, uh, with nitrate dope. So uh, I don't have any issues. This will not come apart. I just like the polytech because it's a glue and it does bond itself better quicker so you don't have to wait where well, you've got to wait for this polytech to kind of dry before you can start pulling on it this is probably about 15 seconds you can start working with it this is probably about a minute and a half two minutes before you can start working with it all right that was the better part of a day um let me show you what i got besides that's what nitrate dope and polytech due to your hands it gets on you and all you do is you just kind of peel it off i use a little bit of lacquer thinner to break up some of the big parts but most of it just comes off uh relatively easily so anyway here's what i got going of course you saw earlier we've got the rudder done we've got the elevator done now this only has they both only have two coats of dope on them um i've got to go ahead and as you can hear, I've got to go ahead and sand these down, put another coat on. It'll probably be another two coats. I'll do um, the uh, I'll do the next coat, and then we'll sand once again. And what I'm what I'm stepped down to now on this is I went from 240, um, and although you can't really see on this, this is 400 grit sandpaper. So it's here's here's a big dirtier sheet, but it's uh, there you go. So this stuff works very nicely for doing the fine sanding on it. Uh, so you end up sanding the fibers down instead of, and once again, somebody likes me. And then uh, after that was completed, um, yeah, we got all the ailerons done. And the ailerons, you think ailerons are easy? These things were a gem. Um, Cause the first time you do it, you, you're gonna, find out that that's probably not the best way to do that aileron and of course by the time I got down to aileron number three um, I had everything panned out and three and four went real quick and easy but um, you know just these here um, that's about an hour and a half a piece about 45 minutes a side yeah that's how long those took just a to, uh, total overall so it was uh, it, it was a lot of time um, whereas these things here took probably about uh, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour a piece. So when you look at all these things put together, that's a full day just for those parts. So what will be coming up next will be the, I'm planning on a uh, fuselage. Um, I, I, I could do uh, the wings, but I think I'm gonna jump in on the fuselage first, get that taken care of, finish everything out to the tail because I still have to cover the, the vertical stabilizer. Um, so I can get all that stuff finished, not glued together, but at least finished. Um, so hopefully that will be my next day down here in the shop and I'll bring you guys in for a little bit of that. Um, because this little stuff is just tedious and it's me trying to get the work done as fast as I can. So I'm running in and out of the shop and that door was open all day long today. So, uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and call this a day and, uh, I'll see you guys next time I'm down in the shop.